Hello and welcome to our reflection for the first week of Lent. Um, today as we're reflecting on this, let's keep our brothers and sisters that were affected by the storm in our prayers, uh, especially those that were um, lost their lives and also those that are in the Ukraine uh, in the middle of the war. Let us start in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look upon your family, Lord, that through the chastising effects of bodily discipline, our mind may radiate in your presence with the strength of our yearning for you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our opening prayer, our collet, and our readings are from the Tuesday Daily Mass. Uh, the Gospel is Matthew 6, 7 to 15. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive you your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel from Matthew is right in the middle of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. The teaching, or he is teaching his disciples on how to be his followers, what we might look back on and say how to be good Christians. And today he's teaching them how to pray. He teaches them the Lord's Prayer, the one that we also know as the Our Father. The Our Father is probably the best known prayer in all of Christianity. On Easter Sunday last year and probably coming up this year, it, it was estimated that over 2 billion Catholics, Protestant, and Eastern Orthodox Christians read, recited, or sang the short prayer in hundreds of languages in houses of worship, all sizes and shapes. In only a few words, the Lord's Prayer summarizes the sayings of the prophets, the Gospels, the teachings of the Apostles, Christ's discourses and parables, all the examples and the precepts of Jesus, and at the same time, so much of our needs become fulfilled. It is a model prayer that most Christians learn by heart. It appears everywhere in the church's life. It is in our liturgy, in our sacraments, it is in our public and private prayer. It is truly a Christian treasure. Though we memorize it as a set formula, a rote prayer, we shouldn't just repeat it mechanically or without thought. Its purpose is to awaken and stimulate our faith. Through this prayer, Jesus invites us to approach God as Father. Indeed, the Lord's Prayer has been called a summary of all the Gospels. The Our Father is commonly known as a prayer with seven petitions. And we know that the number seven always symbolizes perfection in God's teaching. So the Our Father is the prayer with seven perfect petition. Today I'd like to spend a little time with just one of those petitions. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer is a demanding one. 
Not only do we ask God's forgiveness for our daily offenses, but we link God's forgiveness of us with our forgiveness of others. If the prayer just contained the first part, no one would ever stumble on it. If we just prayed, forgive us our trespasses, it would be easy for us to ask forgiveness for what we have done. The second part is much harder. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiving others is not always easy for us to do. We need God's help to do it. But sometimes we have to do it ourselves or we cannot receive God's mercy. This one line is what causes many of us to stumble when we pray the Lord's Prayer. God is a God who forgives because he loves, but forgiveness can only penetrate and become effective. It can only become a grace when we also forgive. I would offer our week one Lenten challenge. As we prepare to receive the Lord, as we prepare for the Easter celebration in a few weeks, let us spend some time with the Our Father. And as we pray it, let us keep in mind who or what we need to forgive as we ask for the forgiveness. We need to be open to God's forgiveness and graces. And to do that, we also need to forgive. And let us pray. Lord, thank you for teaching us how to pray. Thank you for showing us how to worship the Father and how to be his child. Grant us the grace to be more attentive at Mass and whenever we pray the Our Father so that we may offer our prayer with, in, and for you. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us.